Now, I don't live with a lot of vintage four-wheel drive regrets, but not buying a low-mileage 1997 LE Defender definitely ranks up there. I remember in the early 2000s, you could pick these up with very low mileage all day long in the $30,000 to $40,000 price range. And the LE was certainly cool, but I think at the time, I thought the willow green paint was a bit drab compared to the other colors on the NAS Defenders. You had extremely cool colors like Coniston Green, Monza Red, Arliss Blue, and 2A Yellow. Fast forward to 2023, willow green on a limited edition Defender with only 300 units shipped to North America is looking pretty cool and pretty collectible. Before we launch into today's example, if you're new to the channel, I'm Trey and this is Vintage For Real Auctions. We vet all the active truck and 4x4 category auctions on Bring a Trailer and highlight only the top tier of vehicles from this segment. So if you're in the vintage SUV market, you'll want to keep an eye on these auctions. With each video, our objective is to discuss and show you what to look for in a vintage SUV and what to avoid. Our hope is that the simple video format also encourages interaction with viewers on vehicle condition and ending price points. Starting today, we have a 1997 Land Rover Defender 90 NAS Limited Edition. It has a 4-liter V8 with a 4-speed automatic transmission. It's finished in willow green paint over slate gray cloth and vinyl upholstery. All LE Defenders were finished in willow green, and like I said at the beginning of the video, this definitely aged well. The NAS LE is rare with only 300 vehicles made, and this is number 238 out of 300 with number badging to prove it. Now I'm going to throw you a curveball. This one has a reported low 38 thousand miles shown but the seller details a potential odometer rollback and the vehicle is being sold true mileage unknown now before we react to the tmu designation we should note that odometer issues were very common with the 1997 nas defender we'll get into more detail later in the video so make sure to stay tuned that said there are some interesting improvements this defender has had that may overcome some of the ambiguity with the vehicle history we'll get into this more in the pros and cons section of the video with the auction currently at fifty-seven thousand dollars right out of the gate on day one i'd say this one will still have a lot of interest despite challenges with the carfax and mileage history additional equipment includes 16 inch five spoke wheels a front brush guard a winch a pop-up glass sunroof a roof basket a rear ladder air conditioning a blah punk stereo and rear jump seats we've got four days left on this auction there are currently three bids to fifty seven thousand dollars and there are 22 comments on the auction we're still somewhat in the early phase of this auction i do expect it to heat up so if you're looking for an NAS Defender 90, especially a last year model 1997, the LE model is definitely one to strongly consider. We've talked a little bit about the history of Land Rover in the U.S. and other videos. But for those of you that are new to the channel, the first Range Rovers hit the U.S. shores in 1987. The Range Rover buyer was from wealthy enclaves in the U.S. like Metro New York, Dallas, and Los Angeles. Land Rover catered to these markets with luxury Range Rovers, sparing no creature comforts. But in 1993, Land Rover dipped their toes in the utility market by importing 500 Defender 110s to the U.S. Not a lot of choice with the original Defender 110, 490 out of 500 were white and one was special painted black for Ralph Lauren, the fashion designer. So shifting gears, for the first time in 1994, Land Rover imported the NAS Defender 90. The Defender had a 3.9 liter V8 and featured the R380 transmission. For the 94 year model, the Defender was only offered as a soft top model and as a manual transmission. That said, between 47 and 65 of these so-called port of entry models were converted to fiberglass prototypes for the Defender station wagon. Land Rover North America reports that all of these were finished in Coniston Green. There were reportedly 1,943 NAS models for the 1994 model year. Other than the Porta Entry Defenders, the other more rare and collectible 94 D90 convertible was the Arliss Blue color, which was only offered in 1994. Arliss Blue would later go on to be a color option with the 95 and 97 station wagons, but never again as a convertible. In 1995, Land Rover produced 1,191 units, 500 of which were station wagons. I've talked about it before on the channel, but but I owned a 95 wagon in Arliss Blue, which I still think is one of the best colors today. Man, I miss this rig. 97 marked the final year model for the NAS Defender 90. Land Rover imported 1,000 station wagons for the year, as well as 1,499 soft top convertibles, not including the LE. There were 300 LEs imported in 1997, and each had a roof rack with ladder, a brush guard, diamond plate protectors, diamond plate rear quarter panel protectors, and diamond plate on the rear and side steps. 
Let's look at the pros and cons of this 1997 Land Rover Defender 90 NAS Limited Edition. So first with the pros, this is an LE model, which is extremely rare. Putting aside the fact that only 300 were made, I just love this willow green paint. It really has aged well. Another pro for Defender number 238 is that in 2019, the seller replaced the chassis with a roughly $4,000 galvanized frame from Rover's North. Looking here at the Rover's North website, they claim the galvanized chassis is the strongest and safest you can put on your Defender. Apparently, it also has the added benefit of being hot dip galvanized, which provides maximum corrosion resistance. So from a structural integrity standpoint, this Defender should be good to go for the foreseeable future. Now, when I stumbled on this auction, I wanted to love it. It has a lot going for it with this being an LE model. I love the LE accessories like the roof rack, ladder, brush guard, and diamond plating. But there are a few cons of this LE that could potentially impede it fetching absolute top dollar. That said, we definitely appreciate the seller's transparency with this auction. I think this will go a long way. Now we've talked about it. The biggest con for this rig is that it's being sold true mileage unknown. We see from the auction, the digital odometer shows 38,000 miles, approximately 11,000 of which were added under current ownership. Entries on the Carfax report from August 2011 and July 2015 lists a potential odometer rollback. And entries beginning in 2016 state that a not actual mileage title was issued for the vehicle. The Carfax lists an approximate two year gap from 2009 to 2011. I'm guessing what happened is that at some point there, the Defender experienced odometer failure. Like I said earlier in the video, total failure and glitchiness was very common specifically for the 97 year model. In fact, that's why you would see aftermarket providers like East Coast Rover advertising odometer replacements for the Defender. This is such a common issue that we just had a very nice LE sell in April with TMU status. So we'll take a closer look when we evaluate pricing later in the video. The auction also lists that LE Defender 238 has a ding in the left door, a crack in the right mirror cover, corrosion in the doors, and other flaws are shown in the gallery below. Another area I would inquire about in the comments is about any work done on this Defender under current owner. I don't see any service records listed in the auction. I also don't see any service history in the Carfax, but the seller did have the galvanized framework done in 2019. So it seems like he was willing to spend the money needed to keep this in good shape. I always recommend to potential buyers to ask questions in the comments if you're not seeing the information you need to make an informed decision. We'll review the pictures to see if there are any records shared there. And from a Carfax standpoint, the Carfax history shows ownership in Texas, Florida, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. We just read the Defender has corrosion in the doors. I I suspect that the chassis potentially had corrosion issues, which is why the seller made the considerable investment in the galvanized chassis. Before we get into the pictures, we always review the comments section first. As I've said on previous shows, this is a best practice that can save you time when you're looking through pictures. The Bring a Trailer audience has extensive knowledge on these marquee vehicles and will often call out areas of concern. I also always recommend if you see something questionable with the pictures, ask questions in the comments. It can save you a lot of time and money when you're buying a vintage four-wheel drive. So jumping into the comments on this 1997 NAS Defender LE. We've currently got 22 comments on the auction with four days to go. So the first one I'm seeing here says, maybe my vision is going, but I'm not seeing patina. Was this resprayed or touched up at some point? Paint looks good or too good for a vehicle with enough crusty spots to warrant a Galvi frame swap in the minor bubbling towards the rear pictures 14, 15, 38, 41, suggest there's some corrosion lurking under there. I think this is a fair question. Let's see what the seller has to say. Rover Chef, the seller replies by saying, there isn't really any patina on the body other than like you said, minor bubbling. The paint is original and has not been resprayed or touched up. It was washed wax before the photos. The engine bay and underside were not detailed on purpose so everyone could see what actually was there. The frame was swapped a few years back along with a pile of other components during the process at the owner's request. Somewhat interesting, I thought Rover Chef was the seller. It seems like they may be a broker. We got another comment here addressing the galvanized frame. I love seeing these LE trucks in unmolested condition. So many of the years have lost the basket to fit in standard height garages. Galvanized frame is such an added bonus. Like I said, this could be a factor that pushes this one above the high water mark for a TMU LE, which was 82.5. This commenter points out the exclusivity of the LE defenders. Willow green was only on the LE. That's why the color is rare. Only 300 painted in willow green from the factory. Like I said, when I was first seeing these LEs, I thought the paint color was a little bit drab, but it has really aged well. Now I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary with the comments. I think seller's transparency with this auction has done a lot to mitigate any questionable comments. 
let's jump into the pictures. This auction has 141 pictures. I've mentioned that best in class when you're looking at an auction on bring a trailer or cars and bids is 100 pictures minimum. That level of detail gives you confidence that you're getting a full representation of the vehicle. This one looks to have professional photos. I think that that adds overall value and confidence to the auction. Now jumping into the pictures, you see some of the features that were unique to the LE Defender. You've got the factory brush guard, lights, roof rack, ladder, and diamond plating. I do like how seller added this exterior LED lighting. Now you can somewhat see here in picture number three why at some point I thought the willow green paint was somewhat drab. But as we make our way around this vehicle, I think it's going to grow on you too. Picture number five, we get to see a nice view of this roof rack and ladder system. I always thought this setup just added a very cool safari look. Picture number seven, you get a very clear view of this Defender 90 sitting on this galvanized frame. Like I said, just really like the look of these LED lights here in the front. This one has the LED auxiliary lights as well. Picture 23, I think we're seeing one of the small dents they detail in the auction. This is a nice view of the diamond plane that was unique to these LEDs from the factory. Now you may have seen my golden retriever that's appeared in one of my videos. So naturally, I'm a fan of these rear sliding windows for your pets. It's got a real functional benefit. This is the number badging I was talking about earlier in the video. This one is 238 out of 300. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. We're seeing another minor dent here in picture number 42. Wheels all look to be in very good condition. Jumping into the interior, this driver's seat seems to be in very good condition. Looks like the seller keeps these covered. This is the only drawback for me with these 97s. I prefer a three pedal model. But certainly these were much more practical in and around town. We are seeing some rust and corrosion at the bottom of the driver's side door. But again, this is the kind of transparency we're getting from this seller and also the bring a trailer community. 38,000 miles on the odometer, but as we said, this is true mileage unknown. Picture number 66, these defenders were very sparse and utilitarian. But for me, that was part of the cool factor. Looks like we're seeing some of the same corrosion issues at the bottom of the passenger side door. Part of the reason the NAS defender was discontinued for the US market in 98, it was not able to meet the safety standards. The requirement changed and required front airbags and side impact. The inward facing jump seats were unique to the station wagon defenders. I always like this look, again, very safari looking. And here we have a better zoomed out view of the jump seats. You can see these did fold up to maximize the space in the cargo area. Nice view of the four liter V8 in picture 106. Now we are seeing corrosion on the undercarriage and components. Picture 119, you can catch a glimpse of that galvanized chassis from Rovers North. Picture 121 gives you a better view of the galvanized frame. Seller ends the series with a picture of the body off the frame for that galvanized frame replacement. Pretty cool to be able to see this get that galvanized frame replacement. So taking a look at pricing for this 97 Land Rover Defender 90 NAS Limited Edition, I limited my analysis only to other 97 LEs. In the past two years, the high water mark for a Defender LE is 111,000 set in July of 2022 for a 35,000 mile example. The floor for a Defender LE is 75,000 for an 80,000 mile modified example that sold in the same month. Now, like I said before, the TMU designation may impede 97 Defenders from hitting record highs, but it generally does not stand in the way from very significant bidding. We just saw another TMU Defender 90 LE sell in April of this year for 82.5, so nothing to write off. So we have what I consider a low and high pricing range for this Defender LE. Based on my evaluation and comparison, I would think this one would be in line with the 82.5 Defender LE that also shared the TMU designation. We could see a surprise and extra credit given for the awesome galvanized chassis from Rovers North. What do you think about this 97 Land Rover Defender NAS Limited Edition? We would love to hear your feedback on pricing and condition in the comments. Also, I'll say this again, we are a new channel, and if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. This goes a long way to inspire the creation of future content. Thanks again for watching. See you next time for more vintage four-wheel drives.